It's been a year since the famous clash between the Oda and Yamagawa clans that took place near Okahazuma and started Oda Nobunaga's march to glory. At the same time, some distance to the east, two brilliant warlords of the eminent Takeda and Uesugi clans were about to renew their long-standing rivalry over the strategically important plain in northern Shinano. Their fourth and most resounding clash at Kawanakajima Plain, which went down in Japanese history, is about to begin. It's autumn of the year 1541. The poor province of Kai, frequently struck by floods, famines and plagues, was recently the site of a bloodless coup performed by the young Takeda Harunobu, who took action in order to forestall his father's plans to disinherit him in favor of his younger brother, Nobushige. Thanks to the support of the majority of Takeda's retainers, who were at odds with the old daimyo, and the assistance of neighboring lord Imagawa Yoshimoto, Harunobu outsmarted his father, got him exiled, and claimed the lordship of Kai province. At merely 20 years of age, Takeda Horonobu, better known to posterity by his later Buddhist temple name, Takeda Shingen, quickly proved to be a worthy ruler. To improve the province's economic position, Shingen expanded the production of the province's gold mines and ordered the construction of dikes and irrigation projects. These waterworks took decades to complete, but greatly reduced the province's flood problems and expanded its agricultural output. Externally, Shingen began expanding into the central part of neighboring Shinano province, formerly ruled by the Ogasawara clan. But in fact, Shinano was greatly divided, with its lord holding no sway over any of the province's many feuding families. Unsurprisingly, Shingen decided to take advantage of this, his first act was to destroy his brother-in-law by convincing one of his vassals to switch sides, and after a quick conquest of his lands, promptly turned on said vassal. This was the beginning of Shingen's 10-year-long campaign into the neighboring province. Despite two major setbacks against the Murakami clan, by the early 1550s, Shingen had central and western Shinano at his feet. His next target was a river basin in northern Shinano, formed by the merging of two major rivers and surrounded by mountains on all sides. This land was known as Kawanakajima. Shingen's conquest forced the Shinano warlords to seek refuge outside of their home province. Ogusawara and Murakami escaped north to request help of Nagao Kagatora, a rising power of the Ichigo province and soon a formidable opponent for Shingen. Kagatora's father was the deputy and true power behind the puppet lord of Ichigo, ruling over a large, fractured province. But still, as fourth son, Kagatora wasn't really expected to become an important figure of Ichigo, let alone the entire of medieval Japan. Yet through successful diplomacy and wars against rival families, including his own elder brother, Kakatora emerged as the head of the Nagao family in 1548, at the mere age of 18. On the death of the childless Uesugi Daimyo in 1550, Kagatora was recognized by the shogun as de facto lord of Ichigo, and just the following year, he forced his final rival into submission, completing the unification of his home province. Despite internal successes, the campaigns of Takeda didn't escape Kagatora's attention, his only way to stop the expansive enemy was to defend northern Shinano, an important buffer between two belligerents, and its main choke point, the Kawanakajima Plain. And so, under the pretext of reconquering the realms of the exiled lords under his protection, Kagatora took his army south. Initial engagements took place in 1553 and 1555, and resulted in two slightly unfavorable stalemates for Shingen though they at least bought him enough time to conquer southern Shinano. Lord Takeda quickly learned from his early mistakes, and for the next encounter in 1557, he adopted a different strategy. Not only did he enlist the help of his ally Hojo Ujiyasu, grandson of Hojo Soun, but orchestrated an attack just in time when Kagatora was busy elsewhere. Thus, Shingen was able to make some significant but temporary headway into Kawanakajima, 
He reoccupied the remnants of a castle situated by the Chukuma River, which was burnt down by Kagatora months earlier, and ordered its reconstruction and enlargement. As a result, the Kaizu Castle became a major Takeda strong point in the area, guarding the southeastern roads and extending Shingen's control into the Kawanakajima Plain. Its garrison was commanded by Kasuga Toratsuna, Shingen's former page and possible lover, now a trusted and capable general to the Takeda clan. So what exactly was Kagatora busy with? Unlike Shingen, he had a plethora of problems. Though his home province of Ichigo was nominally united under Kagatora's rule, some of the local families had openly disobeyed his lordship. A couple, likely egged on by Shingen, even rose up in a rebellion. Moreover, far away in Kyoto, the shogun had been sending Kagatora constant messages to come protect him from his puppeteers. And last, but not least, his former overlord, Uesugi Norimasa, who was the lord of all of Kanto, had been defeated by Hojo Ujiyasu and soon came running to Kagatora for help promising to adopt him into the Uesugi family and pass on to him the title of Lord of All Kanto, if he agreed to help. As a result of this constant stream of problems, in 1556, for a brief moment, Kagatora decided to give it all up and become a monk. Only by the begging of the lords of Ichigo and their renewed pledges of loyalty did he return. It was this absence that gave Shingen the opportunity in 1557 to make some headway in northern Shinano. But by 1560, Kagatora was already back in action, and by November of that year, he had helped the shogun, managed to overcome the internal issues in Ichigo, and secured his western border through a quick campaign in Echu. In the beginning of the year 1561, he was ready to avenge the Uesugi defeats against the Hojo, and began preparing his troops. The lords of Kozuke and Musashi provinces flocked to his banner, swelling his army to a gigantic force. The Hojo campaign was initially a breeze for Kagatora, who swiftly overwhelmed his famine-weakened enemy, and by spring 1561 was at the gates of the formidable Hojo stronghold, the Odawara Castle. He burnt down the surrounding town, but try as he might, the castle's defenses were simply too strong. After about 10 days, Kagatora lifted the siege and moved the army to the ancient city of Kamakura. There, he was formally adopted by Norimasa into the Uesugi family and named Uesugi Masatora, Lord of All Kanto. Historically, he would be later known by his Buddhist temple name, Uesugi Kenshin. But even with this triumph, the campaign was turning against Kenshin. Both the Takeda and Imagawa were ready to help their ally. What's more, the famine that had made his initial campaign so easy was now making it harder and harder to keep his gigantic army in the field. Hojo forces harassing his supply lines certainly didn't help. Tensions were also running high in the Uesugi camps, as many of the lords that had flocked to his banner held old grudges against each other and were only united by a common enemy. Some who had so quickly flocked to his banner just months before, just as quickly departed without notice. The final straw came in late spring of 1561, when Kenshin received word that in his absence, Shingen was again threatening the Shinano Ichigo border. Kenshin decided he could deal with the weakened Hojo on another occasion, and by early August was back in Ichigo. Hoping to finally neutralize the Takeda threat, Kenshin gathered his army and departed his home base of Kosugayama Castle, reaching the Kawanakajima area on September 25th. Perhaps not believing he could take Kaizu Castle before Schengen arrived to relieve it, or perhaps preferring to finally lure Schengen out for a decisive battle to cement his authority as Lord of All Kanto, Kenshin decided not to assault the castle. Instead, he took positions on Mount Saijo with around 13,000 men. Though the position was surrounded by Takeda fortresses, it offered a commanding view of the entire area, threatened both Kaizu Castle and the southern western roads, and was virtually unassailable. Shingen quickly marched to meet the threat, reaching Kawanakajima by October 3rd. He first tried to entice Kenshin into attacking by taking control of the river crossing and cutting off Kenshin's road north. 
But when Kenshin did not move, Shingen decided to move his army into Kaizu Castle, leaving an open path for Kenshin to march back to Ichigo. As it was now impossible for Kenshin to take Kaizu Castle, Shingen perhaps hoped that Kenshin would pack up and leave, but still, Kenshin wouldn't budge. Shingen's generals advise him that they should attack, and perhaps wanting to avoid a repeat of the second encounter, when he ran low on supplies and was forced to negotiate, Lord Takeda agreed to assault Uesugi positions. On the night of October 17th, Shingen divided his forces in two. Under the cover of darkness and led by Kusuga's men, who knew the local terrains and paths, a 12,000 strong contingent moved into position to attack the Uesugi from the southeast. Some would attack along the river bank and lower parts of the mountain. Others marched along the back mountain ridge, moving from castle to castle to attack down the mountain at the Uesugi forces from behind. The entire force was prepared to launch a surprise attack at dawn. They would also cut off the Uesugi forces from the Amanomiya ferry and force any retreat to go directly northwards into Kawanakajima. Meanwhile, Shingen himself led a detachment of 8,000 men and crossed the Chikumo River north of Kaizu Castle, where they would cut off Kenshin's retreat and attack the Uesugi positions from the north in a pincer movement if needed. Shortly before dawn, an ominous mist rolled into the valley. Takeda men deployed roughly in the shape of a blunt arrow and waited for Kasuga's units to begin executing the plan on the other side of the Chikuma River. But the hills to the south were suspiciously calm, giving not a single trace of upheaval. With visibility heavily reduced, it came as a stunning surprise to Shingen sitting on his stool looking out over the plains to see Uesugi forces marching towards them as the fog lifted. Having expected the Uesugi army to be on Mount Saijo, the terrified Takeda had barely enough time to prepare their lines. Hooves thundered and banners whipped in the wind as Kenshin moved his troops to engage. Unbeknownst to Shingen, Kenshin had learned about the preparations in the Takeda camp and correctly deduced Shingen's plan of attack. It should come as no surprise that a plan involving the movement of 20,000 men would remain undetected. To counter this, Kenshin moved Uesugi forces down the mountain, crossed the Chikuma River at the Minomiya Ferry and used the low visibility conditions to deploy just in front of Takeda's contingent, much to Shingen's dismay. The battle raged across the field. Considering that Shingen's troops were outnumbered and taken by surprise, they performed extremely well. The first Takeda ranks countercharged, throwing the Uesugi vanguard back in confusion. But their pursuit was soon caught in the flank by other Uesugi units in the echelon and thrown back. Soon, Kenshin's men were starting to break through, some finding gaps in the faltering Takeda ranks, others outflanking their line from the north. Kenshin, Finding an opening in the Takeda ranks led his personal guard in an attack on Shingen's guards. It is at this point that the Koyo Gunkan, the earliest narrative source for the battle, tells the story of Kenshin, sword drawn, personally attacking Shingen, who had no time to draw his own sword and had to parry the blows with his war fan. Eventually, one of Shingen's retainers attacked Kenshin with a spear but missed and instead smacked his spear shaft into Kenshin's mount, causing the horse to run. This event, though most likely a fabrication created later to add drama to both daimyo's rivalry, is still a vivid example of samurai ethos and one of the highlights of the Sengoku era. But let's get back to the raging battle, as the odds were visibly turning in Kenshin's favor. Shingen's brother, Nobushiga, and two other leading Takeda retainers were killed. Both Shingen and his son had been wounded. The fourth encounter at Kawanakajima would have soon led to the calamitous end of Takeda Shingen. But fortunately for him, help was arriving. The detachments of Kusuga and others had rushed down the mountain at the sound of battle. Some tried to force their way through the closest fords guarded by Uesugi forces. Others crossed at unguarded points further southwest. In the late morning, the reinforcements finally started to arrive on the battlefield. 
catching the Uesugi forces in the rear. This was not good news for Kenshin. Unable to crush Shingen's contingent in a timely manner and now being attacked on two sides, Kenshin commanded a coordinated retreat north across the Sai River towards Yokoyama Castle. The Takeda forces pursued fiercely, in the process taking back the heads of their deceased generals. However, thanks to the bravery of Amakasu Kagamochi, the Uesugi were able to cross the Sai River and reach safety. Kenshin's forces remained at Yokoyama Castle for a few days and then returned to Ichigo. The Takeda forces followed, resulting in some light skirmishes along the Shinano Ichigo border before turning back. Both sides declared a great victory. The casualties for all parties were considerable. While Kenshin lost more than 3,000 of his men, Shingen's contingent was shattered, suffering more than 4,000 casualties with three of his top generals lying among the dead. However, though the price was heavy, Shingen was able to hold on to Kaizu Castle and with it, gain control of Kowanakajima. Kenshin was hardly worried though, for he had easily defensible buffer regions along the Shinano Ichigo border. His focus had always been elsewhere anyway, and within a couple of months, they would meet again to the east in Kozuke. Three years later, they would return to Kowanakajima for some inconclusive skirmishing. But by this time, Shingen was far less interested in a northward conquest, as the weakening Omagawa clan following the death of Yoshimoto had opened up new paths for expansion. But the decades-long struggle between Takeda Shingen and Uesugi Kenshin, though ultimately inconclusive, became a fine example of feudal Japanese strategy and tactics and also a national symbol of honor and chivalry.